Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. What you're looking at there is my uh, one of my little neon jewel thieves. Uh, and I'm going to show how to measure the output voltage of it. Uh, right now I've got a battery, double A battery, or triple A battery in there, sorry, and it's hooked up to the Simpson voltmeter. So that battery under no load has 1.342 volts in it, okay? And uh, I'll turn it on. And uh, I think you can see that the neon is <laughs> glowing brightly, and my fluke is chuckling away. Uh, just pay no attention to the fluke. Let's look up here. So under running conditions, that battery is drawn down to under one volt uh, when it's powering the, the neon, right? Okay, so let's turn that off now, and we'll unhook the disconnect the neon by pulling one of the leads out of the terminal block. Okay, so the neon is no longer connected. Still have the little rectifier diode in there. Now, the fluke is set to the DC voltage setting and auto volt ranging, and right now it's showing 224 millivolts, and it's measuring that voltage on this, this capacitor here, which is a 220 or, or I'm sorry, a 22, where's, where is it, there it is, 22 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor that I pulled out of the base of a compact fluorescent uh, bulb and took the circuitry apart and all that. But anyway, so 200, or two, 22 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor, the leads of the fluke are clipped across that capacitor, so we're looking at the voltage on that capacitor with the fluke multimeter. And I have the I have this other little set of clip leads here that go over to the output of the neon jewel thief. And one of the leads, the positive lead that goes to the positive side of the electrolytic capacitor and the positive side of the voltmeter, is clipped to the cathode of that little rectifier diode. And I'm going to take the other lead, and I have another little rectifier diode in there that I pulled out of uh, an old television set. This is a, I don't know what it is, it's an 800 volt, 8 amp, or 8 tenths of an amp uh, diode. And I'm just going to use it to make the connection right here. So we've got the capacitor and diode uh, substituting for the neon light, and we're monitoring the voltage across the capacitor. Okay? So you can see right now there's 200 millivolts on the capacitor. So what I'm going to do is discharge that like this. And then I'll take that connection off. And you'll see a little bit of voltage come back onto the capacitor. They always do this. Electrolytic capacitors will spontaneously recharge. So you've got to be careful with them. All right, now I will turn the, turn the Jewel Thief on. Well, first let's look at the battery voltage with it off. Then I'll turn it on. Now we'll look at the battery voltage, and it's dropped down some, so we're nowhere oscillating. And now I'll take the capacitor diode and hook it up. And now we'll watch. Whoops! Now we'll watch the voltage. Look, it's already over a hundred volts. That's a 200 volt capacitor, so I'm stopping. I got a bad connection, sorry. So I'm stopping right there. Okay, now I'm going to discharge that capacitor. See a little spark? All right, so now the, now the capacitor is not connected, but you can see it spontaneously recovering voltage after I discharged it. Okay, so the way to stop that is to hold it hold it shorted for a while, let it go back down, then when you break the connection it'll still recharge itself, but not quite so much as before. To really make sure that you've got a charged capacitor discharged, you need to leave it shorted for a long time, half an hour, an hour maybe. Otherwise, it'll do what it's doing here, which is just spontaneously recharging. That's that little capacitor right there, the voltage across that, that you're looking at. All right. So once again, I'll discharge it. 
by shorting the jumper leads. Okay, and now you can see it's recovering more slowly. So every time you do that, you bleed off its recovery capability. But we're here to measure the output of this jewel thief. So once again, I'm going to touch the cathode of this diode to the anode of that diode. By the time the fluke auto ranges, we're already up to 80 volts. 138, 145, 150, 160. Those are volts, dude. And it's still going up, but I don't want to exceed the voltage of the capacitor. Okay. Now you can see the capacitor is leaking a little bit. Now watch this neon here when I discharge through the neon. I hope the camera can pick this up. Did you see that? And of course that didn't drop all the voltage off the capacitor because the neon stops conducting once it goes out. We still have 45 volts on the capacitor. All right, let's do that again. Here I'll charge up the, use the output of the jewel thief to charge the cap. And this is all happening at 837 millivolts input, 170 volts, 185, 190, 200, that's the limit on the cap, all right? And you can see that that voltage bleeds off, but it's still respectably on that cap. You could take that cap somewhere else and run another circuit on it if you wanted to with all that voltage on there. All right, now we'll discharge through the neon again. That's a bright blue flash, and again we wound up with 45 or 50 volts, 54 volts on the, still on the capacitor. Okay, I turn this off now. All right, so that's charging a capacitor with the rectified output of a neon jewel thief with an input voltage of 840 millivolts. We got up to over 200 volts on that. 22 microfarad capacitor in just a matter of seconds and I, I don't know how high it'll go. I haven't tried it with a higher voltage capacitor yet. Thank you for watching.